yeah, so I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited about the Rose and Zamasu Extreme Z Awakening that I almost forgot that these guys were also getting an Extreme Z Awakening, despite the fact that they were the ones that were announced in the in-game news. So uh, yeah, in today's video, we're gonna quickly go over the Extreme Z Awakening details for the STR, LR Trunks, and Mai, but honestly, after coming off the Rose and Zamasu, I mean, in comparison, these guys are just kinda, I mean, they're okay. They're okay, but they don't really compare in terms of uh, both hype and also, I think, performance as well. So, uh, with that said, let's jump right into it. Uh, leader skill before the Extreme Z Awakening, that is. Time Traveler's Category Key plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 130%, or STR Types, Super STR Types Key plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 100%. 12k super, colossal damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy, and 18k super, mega colossal damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. Passive attack plus 70%, attack and defense plus 10% per, or sorry, uh, up to 70% per time traveler's category ally on the team. E plus 6 and high chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, when there is a future saga category enemy. So, the issue with this LR um, was always the fact that they were kind of locked into one team, right? Like, you could run them outside of Time Travelers in theory, but in that case, they just kind of suck because they don't get a big chunk of their attack and defense buff, right? So you would think maybe with an Extreme Z Awakening, they would at least like do something, make some changes to alleviate that issue. A little bit but that was not the case like at all so with the extreme Z awakening a new leader skill becomes time travelers category key plus 4 HP attack and defense plus 150% or super STR types key plus 4 HP attack and defense plus 100% 12 key super greatly raises defense for one turn and causes cost of damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy, and then passive, or sorry, 18 uh, key super greatly raises defense for one turn, it causes mega cost of damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. Passive is attack and defense plus 70% plus an additional key plus one, and attack and defense plus 20% up to 140% per time traveler's category ally. On the team, super class allies attack and defense plus 30%, and then key plus 6 and high chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks when there is a future saga category enemy. So, uh, yeah, a much bigger attack and defense buff now with the Time Traveler's category up to 140% with a full team versus 70% before. We're also getting an additional 70% uh, defense to start, which they didn't have before. And uh, aside from that, we have the support here, which I believe is also brand new yeah they had no support before and um i think everything else remains the same with like the future saga category enemy buff uh so yeah essentially they are much better they're definitely much better you can't deny that but <clears throat> they're still pigeonholed to this one time travelers team and it's kind of disappointing you know like it, don't get me wrong, they're very good. They're very good on the Time Travelers team. It's just when you can basically only run a unit on one team, um, it's not a very good unit. It's not a very good unit. And if you are running a full Time Travelers team, uh, they're going to put up some good, you know, good damage, uh, some big numbers for you uh, offensively and then defensively. You know, they're going to get some good defense as well. So... As I said, you know, really good on the Time Travelers team. Um, the stunning is actually very clutch when it comes to Super Battle Road and Extreme Super Battle Road. So I always bring them for any team that, um, you know, they could be used on for that purpose. But I, I was just kind of hoping for more. And I think maybe the reason I feel this way is because we literally just saw the details for the Rose and Zamasu. And if you guys uh, missed that video, feel free to go check it out. Um, I'll put a link somewhere above my head. Uh, 
it's a little bit unfortunate. I think maybe people, myself included, would be more impressed by what this Extreme Z Awakening ended up being if we hadn't just seen what Rose and Zamasu are going to be doing. I mean, those guys are going to be hitting like at least twice as hard as these guys. Uh, they're going to be getting more defense and they're not limited to one team. You know, you can run them on many different teams. Uh, whereas these guys, it's basically time travelers or bust. I mean, if you look at their passive without time travelers, it's attack and defense plus 70%. And then, uh, you know, a little bit of support. That's nice. Super class allies, attack and defense plus 30%. And then you're only getting this part if you're facing a future saga category enemy, which is also pretty limited. That That's also pretty uh, uncommon unless you're specifically going into a Dogon event or like some kind of event where you know you're going to be facing a future saga enemy, but it's not like that common of a thing, right? So, um, yeah, without time travelers, it's a bad unit, and with time travelers, a good unit, but not like amazing. It's not like if you are running a full time travelers team, they're like super busted or anything like that. By no means are they you know, blowing anybody away with their performance, I think on Time Travelers, they're just gonna be good. They're gonna be good. So, yeah, that's uh, all there is to say about LR Trunks and Mai. They were pretty mediocre before the Extreme Z Awakening, and with the Extreme Z Awakening, I can't call them mediocre anymore, but I think maybe based on the standard that was set by Rose and Zamasu, for a summonable LR Extreme Z Awakening, um, you could say, yeah, by that standard, it might be actually kind of disappointing and a little bit mediocre. Um, but just to be extra clear, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to like take away um, from what I'm saying um, that like they're a bad unit, right? Like I don't want anyone to think that. I don't think they're gonna be good on time travelers. I just think it's bad that they're only usable or only good on time travelers. That's just the unfortunate part, right? Like most units in this game can be used on multiple teams just fine, but for some reason they decided that this unit is exclusively a time travelers category team unit. And I don't love that. You know, like, I understand why people would not be excited if they pulled this unit. And, um, I was hoping, you know, the Extreme Z Awakening would just make them a little bit more viable outside of this one category, and it, it really hasn't. It really hasn't. It's kind of the same deal, just bigger buffs. They're just even better now in Time Travelers, but, um, they're still gonna be almost equally as bad as before the Extreme Z Awakening on any other team, right? Like, you get the additional defense buff, which is good. And I think the defense on the supers as well is new, right? So they're going to be better defensively. But offensively, it's going to be almost the same thing on a non-time travelers team. So, yeah. Uh, a little bit disappointing. A little bit... It's, I, I was expecting more. Let's say that. I was expecting more. I'm not super upset by this. But I could be a lot happier right now. So... There you go guys, that's how I feel, that's just my opinion of course, if you guys disagree, that's totally fine. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about it. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, as always, if you guys liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And uh, until next time, have an awesome awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.